Okay, is my is my screen visible? Okay, so uh, yeah, so just keep yourself muted if you're not saying Nidish, maybe you yeah. When you're saying, then you can just unmute yourself and ask. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we will start with some simple, some very simple problems on computing lens. Obviously, we'll make make theorems out of them, but first we'll just do them as simple problems. Simple problems on computing lens, and you will see. This this is a topic which is very straightforward. There's nothing you know beautiful, surprising, and so on at least all the time, but it's very necessary to be done. <clears throat> so let us just start with the question. So we have problem one. Yes. So I'll give you a few lens and I'll ask you to find the other lens. Simple as that. Yeah. Let's see. So I'm just dropping a perpendicular. So today's class might, might be a little boring, but it's necessary to do this, okay? Yeah, so that the basics get covered. So we have this A, B, and C, and you can see that this is just a perpendicular, okay? Let me start with numbers, but we will just generalize it. You can take any numbers, okay? So you can take maybe five, nine, and the whole of BC is 11. And just the very straightforward question is find AD. Okay. So I would just want the number in the end uh, and also with the method. <clears throat> Maybe just call this problem zero because this is too easy. Or yeah, let's see. <clears throat> Sorry. So just we have to find the altitude, the length AD. So anyone has ideas how to do this? Okay. So you have, you have, you have got started. Anyone, anyone who has not got started, like how you could start with such a question? These are the building blocks of, you know, find, uh, deriving more interesting formula formulas. Like we have the Heron's formula, finding the area using the three sides given. But this is like the first step towards that, in some sense.
Okay, but you can tell the method, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, <clears throat> right, 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 okay. So this is the thing. So does everybody get this step? We have AB square minus BD square. Why this is equal to AC square? Because these are both equal to the altitude, right? This is just the Pythagoras theorem, right? But then, so you may think that, okay, now we have to find two things, BD and CD, but the sum is given, so it's just, 25 and then you put the AC on this side and then you have BD minus CD, BD minus CD and then there is BD plus CD. <clears throat> okay and then from here you can from here you can find the answer. Um, so uh, can anybody calculate this actually calculate this? Okay, so BD minus CD minus, yes, because otherwise it's negative, right? So CD minus BD is 56 by 11. Oh, but um, hold on. Yes, yes. So from there you can find it. Um, yes, yeah. So you know you know the value of this and so you can find yeah because this is ad square right yeah okay <clears throat> um wait yeah but it will be a little complicated but let's do it that's right yeah uh but then this is right so we are making some mistake because this is bd so, but you have to find BD, right? You have to find BD explicitly. Yes, and then you can find AD. Right, yeah. So, from here, you can find BD. So, it's just straightforward. Find BD. And once you have found BD, then you can find AD, right? Because once you have BD and AB, then you can find AD. Okay. Uh, so is it clear to the other people that this works? Yeah, okay. This is a very straightforward question, right? This is just very straightforward. So there is no problem. Okay. Now I want this for you guys to do this for homework. But this is the this is the foundation, okay? This is the problem where you understand how to find the height. That it can actually be found and you can find it. Now you can try to generalize this. Now that's more of bookkeeping properly and so on and not you know, complicating it more than what is needed. <clears throat> so opposite to this B, there is the small B. Opposite to this capital A, there is this small A. Okay. Now given these three show that area of ABC so you know what I'm going to say, the Heron's formula, right? The, so this area is going to be A plus B plus C by two, A plus B minus C by two, 
and similarly there are other two expressions so there is real merit in doing this problem you may think ah oh, this is a formula but just do it you will learn a lot of things okay there are a lot of things in this to learn so then you have c plus a minus b by 2 okay this is what i want you guys to show and it is very doable from here okay because once you can find ad the algebraic expression then you can compute the area and show that it is equal to this we will use this in many many ways we will do this for a quadrilateral and use it in many ways so <clears throat> do this problem note this down and i'll change the question So that was about the altitude. Now, naturally, the next question is to find the median, length of the median. Okay, this is again going to be very important, though maybe a little less important than the altitude, but yeah. Okay. So PM equal to MC, find AM. And this time, Let's do it for arbitrary variables. Okay, this is C of the, the C is the length of the side AB that is opposite to C. And this is the conventional notation. Okay, opposite to B, there is this side length we call it B because you can see then there is no confusion. Okay, and then obviously this is A by two and this is A by two. But we are interested in finding AM. So, yeah, let us see. Okay, so any any ideas? Okay. Others, Pragadish and uh, sorry, I forgot your name is Aparna. Uh, okay, sorry, yeah, okay. So if if you you have any ideas, you should you can say. So we are trying to find the length of the median. Okay. It's also a standard problem. It's called some Apollonius problem. The formula is called Apollonius formula, I think. It's a straightforward thing. I mean, yeah, if you have not done it, then it's not, but let's see. Okay. 
and all these are generalized into what is called Stewart's theorem, okay, where just the ratio in which the line AM is dividing BC will be given, and you have to find AM. And there is a formula for it, which also one can derive. But I'm not going into that now, because let's do the special cases, get comfortable, and next time we can do. And it's also not very important or enlightening also. The ideas are present here only. Same technique extends. So you see how, how less we know about computing lengths, at least that we realize. It's like the Pythagoras theorem is our only way most, most of the times, right? At least till now. It's the only way for us <clears throat> okay, Ishana, can you tell your idea if you want to? Oh, okay. So let's uh, let's all of us first observe this right that abm the area of abm and the area of amc is same now we have seen this repeatedly but aparna do you see this have you done this yeah. oh you see okay because the base is same and the height is same right is, is that your reasoning or do you have a different reasoning uh, okay so then this is um what it is okay um but so from here since the area is same and now the area can be now if you say this is x right m is x then you can apply heron's formula but that will get really messy maybe okay but so you apply heron's formula because the area is the same, you will have the Heron's formula. I don't even want to write it. It will involve C, X, and A by two, right? It will involve these things. And this one will involve B, X, and A by two. And you have a huge expression with square roots and fourth powers inside them because you have to multiply and so on, right? But from there, you can, in theory, you can find X. But that's not such a good way, right? It's not such a good way because you're going to a higher degree terms to find just A, right? So that's, uh, if you have alternatives, that's not such a good way. So it can be done from here, but we're not going to do that. That's taking going to not be good. Yeah. So can we use, so as I said, like the Pythagoras theorem, anyone? wants to apply that here, the good old Pythagoras theorem. Yes, right. So let us drop that perpendicular and yes, and then we can. So we are dropping. Uh, sorry. Yes, right. So then let's call this part small x okay i'm just going to remove this thing let's call the small x and okay so then we have to have a label for this so this is a by 2 minus x now let's think as i said this is a little boring because we are kind of just 
you know it's unlike the other cases but you have to do it so let's see can we use this now <clears throat> to find am So we should be able to do this, right? Because from the previous problem, we know how to find AD. We know how to find D, BD, right? Um, and so we know how to find DM in theory. So we should be able to find AM by using Pythagoras theorem. But yeah, let's do the steps. Yeah, let's do the steps because in the end, we would like to get that expression for AM. <clears throat> So I'll also start doing, and uh, then you guys, we can see. And this will also kind of do 50% 50, 50 of the proof of the Heron's formula. Kind of. I'm getting a very neat expression for X. Yeah. Now we can just compute AM square, right? Square is AD square plus DM square. AD square is C square minus it's plus A square, yes. Mm. Yes, it should certainly be plus a square. Yeah, yeah so you can see there are going to be a lot of terms, but um, we have to do this, I think. This is kind no. So right, this is wrong. From here we have to take the square of this. Is this does this look, obviously this will simplify a lot, but is this what we get?
Okay, so then you can simplify this, right? Simplify this and uh, so should we do that now? Let's do that, yeah, there's no problem. We should simplify that. Um, yeah. Hold on, so we, are, so we don't have to actually expand this. Okay, we don't have to actually expand this, this one. We can just write it like this only because this will cancel. So just, yeah, watch that because you should not expand this too early. Now we just expand this square, just expand this. And now you see this cancels. So it's good. Now, the way I've done this is not such a good way. There is a better way to do this. Um, but let me give a hint to that and then ask you to do that for homework. Is this calculation correct? I'm very <laughs> unconfident about my calculations. So you should tell me. This will cancel. And then finally, can could anyone tell me what's the final expression then? C square plus B square minus A square by two. That's it. There is nothing in the denominator. Yes, that I think that looks good. By two. You see, we got such a simple answer in the end, and it's so like so simple, right? Take you, you can't even forget it, right? A M square. Right. Because this A is minus, and this A is special because the mid the median is on the line A. Right on the line with length a, so it's hard to forget this equation. But we kind of—it seems like we went a long way to that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I I didn't check the cal. Yes, yes, it's clear from here, right? Because you can see this yellow thing that I've cancelled. That cancels. Uh, is that is that okay? Uh -huh. There is something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. You might be. Yeah. So let's do it, okay? So let's, yeah, I think there is a two or something which we are missing, some coefficients, yeah, right. So we have c square plus a square by four minus c square plus b square minus a square. Uh, you see this thing by two, yeah, and then we can. This is, oh God, what is happening? Four plus a square. So I'm just just calculating. Okay, not doing anything. There's two here. Two b square minus two a square. Yeah, so I'm writing it here, okay? The four and the two C square, we get two C square. So we get two C square. Yes, it is coming indeed, or is it not? Okay, slightly, slightly mistake by four. So Ishan, is this what you are saying? It is coming this. Ah, uh, okay, so it's slightly incorrect, maybe, but yes, this is then this is the final thing. Yes. So let's write it like this. So this is like interesting. So I've written that like that for a certain reason. Okay. Now you guys must, must think of a better proof. You see the a by two, there's a by two because a by two is the length actually, you know, of the part. Yeah, so there is something better. There is a better way to do this or I don't know, okay? I mean, is there a merit to doing it like that? But you can just try. There is a better way to do it. But certainly there is a way which is better than what I have done. Okay, this is a very long way. So think. 
Okay. The problem with my solution is that I have made too many substitutions. Okay. It is usually better to just write the all the equations that you can like in a systematic way and then kind of add them or subtract them and you know get the result directly so what i'm saying is something like this maybe you say okay ad square plus bd square is equal to ab square okay and then you say okay this no so this is ad square sorry it was right i don't know why i erased it sorry you get this equation and in this way you just write the other equations okay you get ad square plus am square equals to let me make this plus tm square is equal to am square and similarly you see there is a third equation okay ac square related to that and then you can once you write these carefully then you know you can decide which one to add and subtract to get your am square okay that's going to be i think much more neater okay so try to do that or you can try to look at this expression and think of a creative proof okay? but All right. So let's go forward. This is for homework. Try this. So this time, let's see. This time I'm going to draw this line. This is again, <laughs> same boring kind of stuff, but you have to do it uh, because these are the foundations. Well, usually we try to avoid these uh, calculations in Olympiad problems. We try to spot some sort of some neat way to do things. Sometimes we try to spot some congruency, similarity, some rotation, but sometimes we cannot avoid it. And sometimes the questions themselves are like that, especially the pre pre level question. Okay, so you have to you have to know this, do this. So if this is C and again the same notations and this is A, and if this ratio, so this bd is to dc okay if this ratio is m is to n now i want you to find ad okay. find ad ad square also you can find okay uh, yeah same same thing but yeah okay so this will then generalize what you have done earlier and you can use it in many interesting ways. When you go to trigonometry, uh, trigonometric uh, geometry kind of their application geometry, you will see this gives more meanings to trigonometric identities even sometimes. Okay. So M and N are just some arbitrary numbers. Okay. So what I am trying to say is that like, this is, uh, this will become M A by M plus N, right? And <clears throat> This will become like n a by m plus n, the length. Okay, right, right. So that's m i. I could have just given some lambda, but saying m by n is it's traditional, so I'm just doing it. Okay, it's going to be very useful. So also do this. Okay, so this is, it's like a Stewart's theorem. This you'll be doing to proving Stewart's theorem if you do this. And there's no new ideas basically, but just the same thing, dropping perpendiculars and doing it, but. You have to see how neatly you can do in the end is is uh, is good. Okay, and then you can see the result coming. Okay. So yeah, you can note this. So these were some boring <laughs> calculations that we did today. Okay. Let me do one more, okay, which is sort of an application, and then we'll transition into some. Uh, connecting with the things we have done earlier. So let me not erase this, this, this new question here only. So this is this right triangle. Let's see, this might be a little more interesting, hopefully. 
right triangle and you have a trisection going on okay so we have a b c let me use the notations from the book then we have d e sorry d, e and e and e e and d are trans uh, trisecting ac sorry so a e e d is equal to dc so these are all equal so they're trisecting the hypotenuse okay now let's say um no so let me just ask you to prove this we have never done questions like this let's do this a d square plus a e square is equal to so this is five by nine b c square so this <laughs> again this is slightly boring but we have to do it okay let's try this it's not so i mean you have to think of a good way to do it so Let's see. So it's a right triangle, remember. So this should not be difficult. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, what is that? Uh, Mm. No, A, A, B, so A, B, you should always label as C. I mean, it's not incorrect to label it as A. I have no problem, but yeah. So what have you labeled B, C, S? B, okay. So I'm, it's not a problem now because, but yeah. Okay, then. That's it, yeah.
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Mm. Yeah, but that does not seem correct, right? So AD, AD is 2x square. So that's, so is the question. It, yeah, but that doesn't, that seems wrong. And that is, I'm making a mistake, I think. So give me a minute. D and E trisect the hypotenuse. Yes, Aparna, you're saying something? Ha, uh -huh. yes, exactly, exactly. So you have got it, yeah. So my question was wrong, okay. Uh, this will be AC square. So now I think we should, we'll let Aparna say because I think, yeah, so it, the question was wrong. Okay, that's what happened. Usually I don't read questions from the book and I today have made a mistake when I'm trying to read it. Okay. So Aparna, can you tell us? Because so before you say, I'll just say that this question was obviously wrong, right? Because if I put a B here, I mean, you can just, you can use your intuition, right? I mean, what has this and this got to do with this? You can always change that, right? By keeping this thing fixed, you can always change this A and you can change the B. So how can they be connected? Okay. So that was obviously wrong. So uh, that was wrong. Yes. So Aparna, since you have got the right answer, even after the wrong question, so then you can, you should say, I think, it'll be good for us. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. It's just yeah. Okay. Yeah, now if you just add these two things and, and you get this. So that was a rather silly question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does everybody see this? Just, just put the value. There's nothing. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, let us go from these computational questions. Computational questions that we're doing, finding lengths and so on. Let's go from here. Let's try to go towards our, the more interesting things. I mean, everything is interesting, but towards concurrency, the more fundamental things, which uh, ju just by computations is usually hard to attack, right? Concurrency, trying to show when three lines meet at the same point, or if three lines do meet at the same point, then what can we say ratio wise and so on. So we saw some um, setups. Today, let's try to see a different setup, which is somewhat like the setup we are considering today. And this also comes uh, many times. You have in-centers and so on constructed by this setup. In-center, even circum-center, this can be constructed by this setup. So what I'm going to do is, like earlier I was making lines from these vertices, right? And so on, and they were concurrent. But today, I'll make perpendiculars from the sides. So let me first label sides. Just a second. Yeah. Then I'll make perpendiculars. So they don't have to be midpoints. That's what I'm trying to say. Just be some things. And but they are concurrent. Okay. So you can imagine three perpendiculars coming and becoming concurrent. Now we want to say some uh, say something about the I mean about the pieces that are created. Just like earlier, we said some ratios. We were able to say some ratios. Last last class and so on. Now we'll try to say something about the lens. Some connection about between these lens. So how can we frame this question? So we can just start with some numbers. Okay, let's say that this is five. This is four, 
let's say this is also four, this is seven, this is maybe nine, and find this. So let's start like this, then we'll try to make this more serious. So these are fundamental. This, this, I'm not putting them as very interesting problems and so on, but these are fundamental pieces with which you'll build more stuff on your own and so on. Oh, this is also the next question in this kind of. Yeah, but this I just wanted to do either ways. Forty. Okay, how did you do it? I don't know the answer. Okay, how did you? Oh, okay. No, no, no. But think again. Can you apply the Siva's theorem? So, uh, apparently, if you don't know Siva's theorem, don't worry. We will see. I just think. But Ishana, how do you apply Siva's theorem here? Yes, but were there any other conditions on the lines? There was. The lines have to come from the vertices. Right? Ah, but this doesn't, this may not, I mean, it might. If they altitude, then it might. But otherwise, it may not go to the, okay. So that's why this is a different um, uh, setup. Yes, but these are not necessarily altitudes, right? These are some 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 other things, yeah. And uh, you can see the circumcenter is drawn like this by bisecting the sides and so on. But then, if you extend those altitude-looking things, they are actually not altitudes because they don't go to the vertex. They don't necessarily go to the vertex. The in-center also is can be seen in this way. There are many other interesting things which can be seen like this. That's why it's a fundamental setup to consider. Let's see. So the spirit of this question is the things we have done today. That's the reason I'm trying to connect them. It's related to the things we've done today. I just to, there was a generalization of this which I kind of forget. But you guys try, I just try to find this. It's not in challenges and threads, but there was interesting generalization. No. Very interesting.
So it's something related to what we've done today. Like all we have done today is Pythagoras theorem, mostly. Pragadish, you have any ideas? How you could find that last piece? Okay, okay. So if I if I said that, let's try to apply Pythagoras theorem because right angle triangles are, then how would you try to do that? How would we try to do that? Uh, but they don't meet, you yeah, know, but they don't meet. We have to still apply. See, they, we can still try to apply. Anyone give me a hint. We have to apply Pythagoras theorem. Without, you know, they, these are not altitudes. So they are not going to meet at the vertices necessarily. One or two of them might meet. This one might meet, those two don't meet. Right, I mean, we, we could still have things like these, right? Uh, yeah. So then what's the right way to apply Pythagoras? Well, obviously you have to first make right triangles. How do you make those right triangles? Well, obviously like this. This is the most natural way. Okay. So remember this D O A, it's not a straight line. It's not necessarily a straight line, okay? But that's not our interest. We have right triangles. We have plenty of right triangles. Now we can, hmm? Mm -hmm. D O B and F O B. Okay, can you say your argument? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly, right. That's nice. Okay. Okay. So I, I was not focus. I didn't focus on this four and four. So I was a bit. Little, I was not sure. Okay. Yeah. That's obviously true. Certainly. Okay. So that's one thing. But those other pairs are unfortunately not congruent. So yes, yes, that's certainly true. Yeah, whatever it is, uh, we don't know the length, but it's equal. How can we apply Pythagoras theorem? So we shouldn't, so the point, the idea is that like the mistake I had made when we were doing that problem about finding medians, right? You were making too many substitutions right away. But the idea is to not think about finding the answer right away, but to just write the equations, then look at them together and see what you can do with them. So this is, okay. So let's just do that. So AO square. Initially, you may say, oh God, there are so many variables now. How is more variables when I draw these triangles? But you will see they cancel out. Even if you don't see that from before, that's not important. We should write it and move forward. See. In fact, I'll just write five square here. So you've seen what I, you see what I've done. On AOF, I'm applying the Pythagoras. And then I just do it again and again. 
Mm. Yeah, so B O. So I'm not doing the calculations here because we'll see that this is not about calculations. There is more fundamental truth here. This BO square will again come in, right? OD square and BD square, which is again four square that we know already. And then this is zero square. Now you guys should think, what should I do with these equations so that I get to the answer, get to what I need to find, eliminate the rest somehow. Now you should know what to do with these equations to eliminate what we don't need so as to find what we need because we don't want to find everything here. Okay. BD, BD square. Uh, no, I computed BO square. Yes, so this is my O. So now you know, right? I mean, you should subtract some equations and add some equations. So you should obviously like, you should obviously subtract these two equations, right? Obviously subtract these two equations because I want to try to get rid of the AO, CO and BO, right? So let's subtract and see what we get. Uh, so what happens when you do that first subtraction? So one minus six or six minus one, whatever. What do you get? Right, so you get OF square minus OE square plus five square minus A square. Is it okay? The AO, the AO just vanishes, that's all, you get cancel. Two minus three, what do we get? Yeah, somebody tell me. Yeah, so if you subtract equations two and three, then uh, what, what should we get? Anyone? Uh, two minus three. Yeah, O F square minus O D square, right? O F square minus O D square. Perfect. And in this way, you get the rest. You get the last one basically, right? You get O D square minus O E square, right? And then now basically you know. Now you will also know from here which equations to add and which to subtract, right? There may look like there are a lot of variables, but you can see they just cancel out, okay? So you should subtract this two and maybe add with this. You decide, okay? Decide and then find a e square from here, okay? Find a e square. So it's, it's easy, it's easy from here.
So you can find and tell me. So we didn't use this congruence because you can see that this will happen all the time. Uh, this cancellations and some things if you're seeing, this will happen all the time. You, the exact numbers are not important. So let us subtract the first and the second equation here in this, right? Because that's what we should do, right? We want to get rid of OF. So then what do we get? We get OD square minus OE square plus five square minus AE square. Okay, but then you have another equation, last equation which we have here is like that only. So, okay, you subtract these two and then you see, you can do it in any way. You get basically that this is equal to seven square minus nine square. And then you can find Okay. So a lot of things canceled. Okay. This is a wonderful, uh, I think, uh, example, right? How just things can get canceled. I mean, even if you just sort of add these equations, but you know, you have to just take care of the sides and then add them. That's basically like subtracting, you get it. So basically we have proved the following. Okay, if I, if I replace these by letters, then you can see again, I'll go cyclically. So if F O, O E and O D are concurrent, so if they meet, and remember that these are perpendicular, okay? F O is perpendicular to A B. So let me remove this. This is called, it's a special case maybe of what is called the Carnot theorem, not the one in physics. There is a one, the one, another one in physics also which is probably more, more important, uh, more fundamental. But yeah, this is our, our theorem uh, in maths, Carnot's theorem. So special case. So uh, let's write this clearly. I suppose this is also there in pre-college. I don't know. Maybe it's only there in the exercise, so it's good. So FO is perpendicular to AB and let's write everything, okay? Because this is a very fundamental result we have proved. You will be using them if you use them wisely in many places. AC is perpendicular to OE. So these perpendiculars are there and then they're concurrent. So it's given that they are concurrent, okay? That means they pass through the same one point. All three, these three pass through the same one point. Then you go cyclically which means AF square, you can go counterclockwise minus FB square. So you see, I'm taking those chunks and I'm taking the difference of the squares. Yes. Ah, so that's, that's there, right? So AE square root of 57. Yeah. Nice. So you see, you can find the answer, but now we, we have noticed that in this really the exact numbers were not important, right? The cancellations were happening on a more variable level, a variable basis, right? Means on the level of variables, I mean. So that's what I'm basically writing. And in fact, this may be easier because once you write like this, then you can see, ah, then Pythagoras theorem should be used. <laughs> okay. So maybe it's, this is easier than the computational version. This is zero. Okay. And do this for homework, but we have essentially already done it. Okay, but do it again, apply the Pythagoras theorem, decide the equations and, um, okay. But is this a surprise? No, right? This is exactly what we have done. If there is some doubts, like if you're completely like, how is this coming? Then you should ask me. If you're completely surprised by this.
no okay good right so that's that's the goal right we take some calc computations we see the methods and the calculations and then we make the we write the theorem okay so this is the theorem and there will be more generalizations of this but for now this is the way. okay so this will be the end i'll just take a few more minutes to say some just summarize things and tell the direction in which we will go next time so our goal is to have the tools right to prove things not necessarily to just have theorems and theorems and theorems okay but in a certain meaningful way so that we see where we are going so initially i mean just if you summarize the last few classes right um initially we saw the connection between areas and ratios okay we saw this connection between areas and ratios okay uh if you have uh, two figures with the same base and the ratio of the areas is the ratio of the lengths okay ratios of lengths we saw this connection using this connection we kind of said okay if some concurrency is given then you can find some uh, relation in the ratios relation in ratios right we were like these three lines are given to be concurrent then this ratio by this this ratio then this by this and this by this we could relate them and we basically use this you know connection between areas and ratios using parallel lines basically that was a bridge parallel lines maybe parallel lines was the bridge we did this and then with further analysis we kind of went from some collinearity if that is given then also you can find relations in ratios today also we had so this is concurrency a today also we had a different kind of concurrency but also concurrency but coming out from a different kind of situation more computational situation then we didn't have relation in ratios but we had relation in lengths right this is kind of obviously we also did some applications and so on but conceptually this is what we did and we have almost though few times we have almost never done the reverse we have not yet shown we did i think one problem but we have not yet shown how to use these things to prove that three things are concurrent or to prove that three points are on the same line which is actually geom which is a real geometry which is a real you know which just calculations will not tell you okay so that is the next goal okay the next goal is to do the reverse and it's very easy because we have the right results actually all these are reversible okay uh, so what i mean by all these reversible for today's for example thing we will show that if this is given if you are given this then you can show that so let me do it shindi so if you are given so you're not given that they are concurrent okay let's say you're not given that you're just given like this but you told that this af square minus fb square and so on this is zero total then you can say that they will meet at the same point you will be able to say that they'll meet at the same point so that's the kind of things we want to do next to show that angle bisectors meet and medians meet and so on so that's the next goal okay next goal is to do the reverse and that is a, is a one package of triangle geometry right is to do reverse but again initially we will not do them via theorems we will do them just with bare hands like with just drawing parallels and so on then we'll get an idea of what it means to prove things are concurrent and what it means to prove things are collinear and then we will see that those just, will just be one line things after that use these results and then we'll have some very powerful tools developed to do problems okay so that is it. 
generalizations will obviously come they'll keep coming but the idea is not to teach all the theorems in geometry Euclidean geometry or at least the first 50 theorems no because that's just too much time it takes and it's not very productive you should understand these things that we are doing sequence so that when you read on your own parallel things like these you can you know relate things and you know, consolidate summarize and you know, becomes very interesting then you see all the connections and also it's not too burdensome okay so that is the thing and currently i'm and though it's optional though i am because i've given you problems and you can try them and so on but i'm following this not following okay and just as a post science for us okay pre college mathematics there is a book okay it's called challenges and thrills of pre college mathematics the name of the authors i have kind of forgotten it's a very famous book is only one book like this so you can okay it's in it's covered up so yeah krishna murthy and yeah krishna murthy if you just you'll get this okay there's only one book like this okay i think krishna murthy you can keep this book if you want okay today what i did you will find parts of it and much more and not everything but you will have definitely have many more things in section 3.6 so unfortunately in the in the contents it is a misprint at least in my version they say congruence and collinearity but it's congruency and collinearity is the name if you see the chapter you'll see that's 3.6 so i'm not following it line by line because i don't think that's the right way at least way i'm doing but yeah we have done many more different things and but many less things which are not there my approach is different and yes so are there any questions any questions just ask me